So now I've got some clips into my sequence and it's a very straightforward one. I've just got introduction at the beginning. Three, two, one, go. Off they go on the race. I'll just turn the audio off on this for a second. And if I just drag through, you can see I've got them racing. There's a couple of shots with some terrible audio and I've just stripped the audio out by holding down the Alt key and, and selecting the audio and hitting the Delete key to get rid of it. I've kept the other audio in because you've got some little bits of voice and a bit of bike noise in there. I've used a little bit of the multicam media here at the end. Just up to the last moment and then I've got this um, crazy jumping going on which I thought would be a nice thing to close out with. I'm just going to add some very, very basic effects here, some fades up and fades down and a title, just to get this reasonably close to ready so I can throw it into a DVD. So first of all, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the timeline. And let's take a look at the timing here. So by the time he says three there, I've just got the audio off, by the way, so you can hear me instead of the uh, audio on the timeline. But just by the time he says three there, I want this to be at full opacity. So at this point, I'm going to hold down the control key and click. I'm just using my playhead as a guide. Then I'm going to click and add another control point and drag this down. And that's my fade up. There we go. So by the time he starts counting, we've got full visibility. And then I think what might be quite nice is here, they get off to a relatively slow start. And then we've got this fast motion section. So maybe what might be quite nice, and maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, is just to add a little dip. So I'm going to click, click, click and click and just drop this down. Now I'm doing this kind of rough. I don't really know how much I'm zoomed out, but I've got 11 seconds, 12 seconds, 13. So this is going to be quite brief. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, it kind of works. I think that's okay. And then dragging through here, uh, overall, I think there isn't really any need for any, any other fade effects, but maybe right at the end. And by the way, I'm just zooming in and out with the plus and minus keys at the top of the keyboard here. Then uh, round right about here, they're hugging, that's a good moment. Let's do click, 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 and click. And again, I'm right now, I'm doing, being super lazy here about the timing, but it's just to be able to watch and see. Yeah, I think that works. And I could maybe run some end credits here. We'll see, see how I feel. Again, I'm going to click and click and drag this down to the corner, and that's my fade to black. Okay. Now, I think we're going to need an opening title here. So let's just get something ready. Let's lay something out. I'm going to press Control or Command T. I'm going to call this Mountain Race because that's the text I'm going to put in it. The settings are already correct. I'll click OK and I'm going to choose my text tool. I'm going to type in Mountain Race and then just click back to the selection tool. I think that's OK as a size. I'm just going to click up and increase the font size a little bit. Not too much. And because we are looking at a mountainous subject matter, I'm just going to click the kerning here and drag this out to the edges of my safe title zone. Not too far. I don't want to cross over the line there. I want to keep inside that inner box. Then I'm going to center this just in case I'm out. You just shifted by about one pixel there. And I could play with a few different styles, but I'm pretty happy with that. I think the only thing is I want this to be a bit more visible. So I'm going to pull down and I'm going to put a shadow on this. Now, if you set the shadow to have a really long distance, you can really see that moving there. If you look by the M as I drag this, it's really obvious. And that's not the effect I'm looking for. I'm going to set the distance to zero, and then I'm going to crank up the spread and the size. And you can see it just gives a softening or a darkening rather of the surrounding color. And it's not that obvious. If I click up on the numbers here to drag the background video, it isn't that obvious when the shadow is there. You can see it, but it just helps to pick out the letters a little bit. And I can adjust the opacity to increase or decrease the effect. I think that's OK. Then I'm going to add an outer stroke. I'm just clicking Add here. And a 10-point stroke is not too bad. It's just helping to pick out the letters against the lighter parts of the image there, because this is just a regular white title. It's very simple, but I think it pretty much works. Then I'm going to get a rectangle tool here, and I'm going to draw out a rectangle that goes about halfway up the text, which is going to look awful to begin with. But first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the outer stroke, so it's just white. Then I'm going to click up into the fill type, and I'm going to set this to a linear gradient. Let me get this the right way around. 
I'm going to select the second color swatch here on the gradient, and I'm going to drop the opacity. Nope, wrong one. Let's choose the other one. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. And then for the color, so I've got this stop listed here. This one's selected. You can see I can adjust the position of this. For the color, I'm going to use the eyedropper, and I'm going to maybe pick out the blue from this guy's jacket. Of course, I've chosen the wrong one again. That's the one I've got transparent. Let's try it again. Yeah, maybe a darker one there. Okay, it's not too bad. And then maybe if we adjust where that comes, I just want it to tip the bottom of the text a little bit. There we go. Now, if I click away, yeah, I think that's okay. Let's just check my text. I need to make sure that it's in front. So I'm going to right click on this, choose a range and bring to front. That's bringing my white back. Bear in mind that each time you add an element to a title, it's going to put it in front of what was there before. And I think that looks okay. I'll close that down, drag it into my sequence. In my preferences, this is under the Premiere Pro menu in macOS, it's under the edit menu on Windows, I've got the default still image duration as 150 frames. So with this media, that's getting on for about six seconds of duration. And well, that's probably running on a little bit too long. But if I pop open the video two track and zoom in a bit, I can click and click, put in a fade up, drag over a little bit, click and click, because I know I've already got the opacity selected because that's the default keyframes. Let's have a look now. There he is, three, two, one, go. And it'd probably be nice to have that disappear before we get that last shot. So I'm gonna hold down the control or command key here and I'm gonna drag in. Let me just in fact, I don't even need the control command key, do I? I can do this with the red mode there. And uh, Premiere Pro was stopping me from using the yellow mode because I've got my sync locks on on my tracks. Of course, I was going to change sync. Now let's add that keyframe I've just written out by doing the trimming. Pull this in a little bit. Let's take a look at that. There it comes up. He's doing his countdown. By the time the shot's out, so is the title. That kind of works for me. Let's have some music now. I'm gonna double click in the project panel. Here's my music assets. I'm gonna bring this comeback open shot. Again, just in the name of speed, I'm gonna drop this straight down to my audio two. And if I press the backslash key on my keyboard, it's gonna bring me back to viewing the whole timeline. And if I pop open my audio two track here, I know this is gonna to be too loud. Let's have a listen. <laughs> way too loud. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to choose audio gain, and let's bring this down to about minus 20. Much more acceptable. Let's bring this fade up in the music in line with the fade up at the beginning. So in fact, I'll tell you what might be nice actually, is if we get his countdown out as the music starts. So I'm going to pull this forwards a little bit Let's have it in the last section there. I'm just trying to line this up so as he finishes counting, the music starts to fade up. And maybe we're at full volume for this shot here where we see the action begin. So I'm gonna press the up arrow on my keyboard to line up my playhead. That's just gonna give me a thing to line up to. Control or command click, control or command click. Drag this down. Let's turn his audio back on and have a listen. In fact, let's go full screen. Set him up. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Okay, I might want to play with the audio level a bit go. compared to his speech. It's actually pretty quiet. In fact, let's do that. Let's change that to... Notice I'm not going to adjust the gain. I'm going to just punch in a new gain adjustment. Let's make this... Let's go for minus 16 dB. It is the primary audio in this sequence. Okay, so now I've got my sequence. I don't have my rolling credits at the end, but I don't really have anything to add to it. What I might want to do is just have a look at the audio. Let's see how that fades out. Okay, so I don't really have any good audio to go with this clip. I could throw in another spot sound effect if I like, but it's quite a nice little outtake at the end. And I think I'm pretty much ready to send this over to a DVD 
to get some feedback on it.